Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. In case you can't hear it, yes, the turkeys. They're loving this new office, storage, studio, whatever building we are going to end up calling it. And for whatever reason, whenever I'm in here, they are right outside the window or the door, just chirping and gobbling and all kinds of stuff. And I, I've the other day, a bunch of people said they could hear them. I don't know what it is. They don't do this anywhere else on the property. But there is something about this building that, that, that just intrigues them, I guess. But anyways, um, I wanted to start today off with giving you, hopefully, a helpful hint when it comes to your food preps, uh, basically because it's a, something that happened to us. Um, and I want to get into that a little bit more, food uh, and and. It, weather and a lot of stuff kind of all connecting together. So uh, this this past weekend, uh, one of the things that we did Sunday um, is we, we kind of went through our food preps. Uh, we went through them to kind of check. This is something that we do, you know, ever so often and that you should also be doing. Uh, you don't want to just take your food uh, regardless of what it is. Uh, no matter how small your pantry is or how big it is, um, maybe you only prep, you know, dehydrated food or freeze-dried food. Um, maybe it's canned food that you've canned. Maybe it's canned food you've purchased. Whatever it is, you know, in buckets and Mylar bags, it doesn't matter. Uh, you should never just put that stuff in any kind of storage, shelves, barn, garage, basement, closet, and then just leave it and forget it. Uh, you should uh, frequently... I would say at least three or four times a year, kind of peek in on it, check it, go over it, uh, check things to make sure that they've not, you know, maybe too hot, too cold, uh, that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, we kind of had a, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it was just, it's, it's something uh, to, to remember. Don't put um, necessarily heavy breakable things up top that, that could uh, tip over. And which is one of the things that we did on one of the shelves uh, that had all the, a lot of the canned food. Um, had a thing of molasses up on the very top shelf. And you know how things are. They kind of shift and move. And apparently the thing fell over and kind of broke and spilled everywhere. And I wasn't aware of it until yesterday when I went in there and it was kind of towards the back. And so it was a mess. So it was more than just, you know, inventory and checking things. It was also cleaning a lot of of cans and, and jars and stuff that was just covered with molasses that had kind of dried and it, it was a mess but it's done um, but I just wanted to bring that up to you because you need to be making sure of where you're at you know we, when we do this um, we're, we're almost every time every time we go in and do inventory check things we're like wow uh, we've got more of that stuff than what I, I was really thinking because even if you write the stuff down, you have a written inventory. Most people aren't, you know, checking that food inventory list on a regular basis. You know, they check it and then they kind of put it away. And then when you're going to buy things or if you're in the store and you run across a deal, I mean, there's times that we are specifically going and buying that we know, okay, I want to buy so many cases of this or flats of this or jars of this. But then, you know, all the other times you go into the grocery store, you just run across something sometimes. You run across a good deal or something, and you're not sure of how much to buy of it. Um, because a lot of times you can't remember uh, what, what you have. So it's good to kind of go through and, and occasionally realize, okay, wow, I'm, I'm a little low on this stuff. I didn't, I, I forgot, man, I've, I've, we, this has got to be a priority to get some more of this kind of stuff. Uh, so certainly do that. And the reasons why is because, as we've talked many times on here before, uh, things are getting, I think we're, we're, we're slowly, maybe not quite slowly, it may just be picking up speed is what it kind of looks like. Uh, we're getting to a point to where um, it is going to get harder to purchase things. And there's a couple of things that's going on. Obviously, there's the supply chain problems. And I don't think that those are going to go away. I know they're trying to tell us that, wow, they're, they're kind of sort of getting better. Uh, you know, they, they've kind of got a, figured out a solution out in California. But they, there's, there's a lot of other problems happening. Then there's this new variant. Uh, and as I talked yesterday, um, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause problems regardless. I mean, no matter how mild it is, uh, I, I think because of the how we're seeing the media uh, build this up, 
uh, it, it, they're just using it. It doesn't matter. It's just like before. It doesn't matter how, how bad it, it really is. It doesn't matter how, how destructive it is or isn't. It's, it's what they're going to do to it. And they're going to hype things up and they're going to get more people hyped up and buying in to whatever, uh, you know, new rules and regulations that they're going to, you know, pass that, that are unconstitutional and, and not real laws. And for example of this, uh, New York is once again leading the way. And if you remember back when all this first started, New York was kind of leading the way then. Um, and they are... Uh, implementing some some pretty strict lockdowns again not necessarily lockdowns I guess but mandates uh, they're mandating basically everyone from the age five years old in New York City and up that they have to have this to do business they have to have it um, we're seeing this in many other c countries over in Europe we're seeing it in Canada we're seeing it in Australia and it is here it may not be everywhere here but it is here and, and, and as we've seen the last time, and as we uh, have seen in other things in, in American history, is when one or two states start to, to fall to that, it doesn't take very long for other states to kind of pick up uh, uh, and do the same. So that's one good reason right there of why you should make sure that your food preparations are where they need to be or at least you're aware of what you have and, and the, the, the dates and the, the amounts and stuff. And, and that way you can put more focus on a particular food item or a particular uh, other item, medicinal, uh, first aid, whatever it is. Uh, because we're getting to that point that it, it very well could start being uh, tough for a lot of people to, to get things. Tough in many ways. Could be tough because of of lack of supplies. It could be tough because inflation just keeps going up and there's not really any signs of that. And as the inflation goes up and the, the variant and as we're seeing the stock market start to, to, to take a downward, you know, we don't know how much longer the dollar will exist in the way that it is, have any the value that it does. Uh, so certainly, um, certainly be, uh, I, I would advise you at some point soon, if you haven't done it in a while, is put some focus on what you have in foods. You know, kind of check them, inventory them, uh, and, and figure out what you've got. Another thing to think of with this is the weather. Um, today, the reason why I'm inside right now is because it's crazy cold out today. We've had great weather the last week. Um, and of course, this is the Ozarks, and the Ozarks does this. So I know that what's happening right now here in the Ozarks isn't necessarily a good... Um, is it you know to, to ju justify what I'm about to say but uh, we've had some good warm weather today it was barely 40 and lots of wind and just bitterly cold uh, for this area and it's going to be that way tomorrow and they're saying by the end of this week it'll be back up in the 70s and then back down into the 30s it's just this roller coaster but weather patterns are certainly changing and and it's a, having effect on the agricultural systems around the world if you remember last year, Europe was really struggling. Uh, they had a very, very long winter. Um, and a lot of the crops, the, the olives and the wines and, and the grape uh, crops and other things were, were struggling and damaged because of late season freezes and stuff. Well, it's already happening again. Uh, Switzerland, or is it Sweden? They have uh, had one of the coldest temperatures in 35 years already. And this is early on in the winter season, folks. I mean, technically winter isn't even here yet. It's close, but not even here yet. St. Petersburg uh, recorded, this is in Russia, St. Petersburg, Russia, they've recorded the coldest temperature in about 130 years. Um, this thing that we've been talking about for the last couple of years called the Grand Solar Minimum and how we needed to get ready for it because it's coming. I think it's kind of clear that it's here. If we look at, the, at how the weather, weather patterns and the seasons are changing, they, they don't even have to change drastically. And I think that's what a lot of people that, that don't fully understand it is they, you know, they're expecting, and I've said this many times before, they're expecting this you know, ice age kind of thing where you know, everything's just you know, buried under snow and ice and stuff. And that's not how it is. It alters weather patterns. It alters uh, the seasonal... Uh, temperatures that that we're typically used to and why that's so important now than it would have been the last time one came around which was about 400 years because it's a 400 year cycle um, is 
the, our agricultural system is is so uh, it, it it's balanced on 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 just a, a thin little line, uh, whereas before. In the last several hundred years, you know, everyone was kind of farmers were on their own. They they grew whatever. Now everything is very monoculture. Uh, pretty much the entire globe's food supplies only comes from just a small handful of crops. Very you know various different crops, uh, corn and wheat and soybean, you know things like that. And um, everything is is tweaked, you know, genetically modified and and or or just hybridized and everything to 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 get the maximum amount of growth for a very specific climate and everything. And when that climate changes, even just a little bit, it can really throw things out of whack. Uh, the, the, the growing seasons seem to be shortening, uh, which is, is very important uh, for a lot of these crops. You know, they have, they have it kind of a science, you know, down like a science, because it is a science anymore. Agriculture isn't just going out and planting seeds. Big agriculture that feeds most of the world is very much a science. And they know exactly how many, you know, growing days that they have. And so they plan the crop to have exactly, you know, almost exactly that. And when that changes by 10 days, 15, 20, 30 days, uh, it can have massive impact on agriculture, which ends up having a massive impacts on food supplies. And while we're not seeing global famines yet, we are seeing uh, more and more, an, at least an increase uh, in various parts of the world where uh, the agriculture, uh, it, it's, it's struggling. They're struggling to keep up uh, because of the weather, but they're also struggling because of inflation. They're struggling because of, of the supply chain. Uh, they're struggling because of prices, you know, uh, fuel prices are just astronomical right now, uh, especially for a lot of these farmers. Um, and, and fertilizer, there's shortages in things like fertilizer and other fuels that they use. Uh, they're, they're having difficulty getting uh, parts for their equipment. That's one of the things. There's been a lot of farmers that um, I've read uh, various different articles that they have actually considered getting out of farming or uh, reducing the amount of farming that they do because they can't even get the, the parts for the machinery to, to run their equipment uh, because of the supply chain problem. So, Forget about all the other stuff going on and just the food, the agriculture, everything that deals with just food right now, it's really a perfect storm. It really is. And I don't think it would take very much to kind of tip it over and cause it all to just, you know, collapse. And so uh, it's, it's definitely a good time. And I know I talk about this often uh, to, to reassess. You've got winter coming on. A lot of you are already into winter. Uh, at, at least temperature and weather wise, but certainly to reevaluate, uh, do this on, I, I'd, I'd say at least a quarterly basis um, to go in and inventory and check your food, know what you've got, uh, make sure you're storing it properly. Uh, you don't want to put it somewhere where, you know, bugs and mice can easily get to it. You don't want to put it somewhere where uh, the temperatures get too cold or too hot. Uh, and you, like I said, you want to kind of check on it. I mean, I hadn't checked on it uh, as often as I should, and like I said, I had a big mess with molasses over a whole bunch of cans and jars that had to clean up. Uh, and that, you know, that's not a big deal, uh, but it's it's just an example of how we should should make sure that we're checking on stuff and figuring out what we need to get and putting focus on that. Uh, winter months are always tough for people, a, a lot of people. It may not be always for you, but for a lot of people, and we're in such an interconnected global economy and global currency, basically, uh, that when we start seeing large portions of the population struggle uh, because of all the stuff going on, it can make everyone struggle. Uh, so, so certainly take the time. Uh, you, you were, we're in between holidays for most people. Um, and to kind of reevaluate because I think the closer we get to the, that Christmas holiday, um, they, things are going to start getting kind of crazy again. And then after that, what I suspect, it'll be after that. I think they're going to hold off on a lot of the real crazy stuff to get people through the Christmas holidays. And then, and then we're going to get blindsided by about a bunch of stuff uh, regarding the new variant and all this kind of stuff. So um, certainly take the time 
evaluate inventory and see what you need to be adding to your preps, your food prep specifically, uh, before you may not be able to get all the things that you want or, or maybe afford the things that you want uh, to put into your food preps. All right, folks, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.